Hey and welcome to MTG CubeTube. My name is Short, and I think there's no better magic format than Cube. This is part two of a four or five part video series that aims to help new cube builders to build their first cube, but that I hope has enough useful ideas for more seasoned cube designers as well. In the previous installment of this series, we decided to build a budget-friendly 360 card cube that focuses on the 10 color pairs that will each have a somewhat linear strategy. We will try to limit the budget to 500 US dollars and you will see this exclamation mark on cards if they are a risk to the cube's budget. To get to 360 cards we decided on 46 cards from each color, 40 multicolor and 20 hybrid cards, 25 colorless cards or artifacts and 45 lands. We then chose the strategies for Azorius, Celestia and Demir and for each of those guilds we made a collection of 24 cards that form the core of the guild's strategies. Four multicolor cards that have a signpost function, two hybrid cards and then nine cards from each of the guild's colors. Here you see the collections we made for Azorius Blink, Celestia plus one plus one counters and Demir Theft. After assembling all the guild collections We'll have room left for 10 cards of each color to patch any holes or to just add some cards that we like. To that end, we started a wish list of cards that didn't quite make it, but that we want to keep in mind going forward. In this episode, we will choose the strategies and select cards for Golgari and Izzet, and in the next video, I will cover all five remaining guilds, but in less detail, unless I decide to split that in two separate videos. In the final video, we will then see how it all comes together and select the remaining 50 monocolored cards as well as the colorless cards and lands. For the two guilds we will discuss in this video, we will focus mainly on the balance between enablers and payoffs, a topic we mentioned but didn't go very deep on in the previous video, and we will see how Golgari and Izzet have very different demands regarding this balance. For Golgari, the main strategies to choose from are Death Trigger, Sacrifice and Aristocrats type strategies, Midrange and Attrition, also known as The Rock, Tokens, or maybe specifically Saprolings, Tribal Elves, plus one plus one or minus one minus one counters, and Graveyard Shenanigans. Graveyard stuff has easily the most support of any Golgari strategy, and it's also the one I like most, so let's just go with that. The enablers for this strategy are all cards that let you put cards into your graveyard, be it through straight up self mill, a multitude of variations on Grizzly Salvage, cards that let you find cards from your deck to put into your graveyard, either directly or indirectly, cards that simply let you discard cards from hand, and any card with Surveil, Explore or Dredge. For payoffs we have Recursive Threats, non-creatures that can be cast from the graveyard, Classic Reanimation or Mass Reanimation, Cards that let players rebuy or recast cards from the yard. Cards that care about the number of cards or card types in the graveyard. And cards that use the graveyard as a resource to pay for spells or costs. And we can mix and match here, because all of these payoffs benefit from the same enablers. Just fill up your graveyard and these cards will all get better. An easy way to find cards for this strategy is to go to edhrec.com themes and then go to the card lists for the themes Self Mill, Reanimator, Graveyard, Mill and Dredge and then choose Golgari as a color combination. But the card pool for graveyard related cards in Golgari is so deep that some searches on Scryfall or Gatherer will find you many more options than those you find on EDHREC. Search on any of these graveyard related keywords or on search strings like Graveyard Hand or Graveyard Into Play or Number of Graveyard and you will find many variations on the various recurring themes we saw earlier. When selecting cards, we need to keep in mind that we want our somewhat linear strategy to matter, but we don't want it to become parasitic where too many cards are only useful to this strategy and useless to everyone else. For the graveyard strategy, it's important to have enablers that fill up the graveyard, but you want to keep the number relatively low because those enablers are usually not very desirable to other strategies. For this reason, let's use three of our four multicolor slots for enablers. This way we know that a Golgari drafter will be able to find the enablers they need, and we don't have to use many monocolored card slots on them. The three enablers here make it clear what Golgari is about. Fill up the yard and you'll probably profit somehow. I want to also have three enablers in both green and black. 
Green has some great options at 2 mana that allow players to fill up their graveyard early while getting some card selection. And these black enablers are a bit more expensive but potentially mill more cards and Liliana doubles as a solid payoff. Some of my favorite enablers like Survival of the Fittest and Hermitruid are sadly too expensive for this budget cube, but if you're doing a graveyard strategy and don't have any budget restrictions, these are great options. Now that we have our 9 enablers, let's find the right mix of payoffs. There are plenty of good multicolor payoffs, but for this cube, Prolucanos and Jared feel like the best fits. They fit our budget, we have almost no other 4 drops in the rest of this collection, as we'll see later, and they fit the power level of this cube well. Jared is a more narrow card and is basically unplayable outside of the self mill deck. Perukanos is less obviously a signpost card, but it is more open-endedly powerful and I can imagine other guilds wanting to splash for it perhaps. Because the linear graveyard strategy has a tendency to become parasitic, let's choose the more open-ended card in Perukanos here. Hogag and Deathrite Shaman are great hybrid payoffs, and I sort of like how Deathrite is a good hate card against a graveyard strategy at the same time. Perukanos and these two all eat cards from the graveyard, so let's try to have no more cannibalistic cards in the other payoffs. For green, I like Ishkana and Spider Spawning, even though these almost count as multicolor blue black cards because of their black abilities. Again, to keep this Golgari collection from getting parasitic, I want to balance these out with green payoffs that are much less linear and also rely less on having many enablers. Especially the three cards with one shot rebuy effects definitely get better with self mill. But they are also effects that other decks could use because cards go to the graveyard naturally as well. Black has a huge variety of payoffs, and the ones selected here show the diversity. There's regular and mass reanimation, a sticky threat, cards that care about the number of cards or card types in the yard, and another rebuy effect. Living Death and Avatar of Woe are the strong linear payoffs for the graveyard strategy that require the most setup, while the other five depend a little bit less on having a lot of enablers. Sorting this all by converted mana costs and with creatures and spells separated, the Golgari collection looks like this. Guild collections should look almost like the most linear version of a draft deck for that guild. They lack bread and butter cards and may not have a great curve, but they are the most extreme version of what, in this case a Golgari deck, could look like. And I think this actually looks great. The curve sort of works, there's plenty of early enablers to make every other card function, and the power level feels right compared to the other guilds so far. If we copy and paste the card list into the deck pricer, we come to almost 37 US dollars. That is on the high side and we might want to make some changes when we get to the final tuning. We could go down to 25 dollars with these changes, but I'd like to keep especially Living Death. Maybe just swapping Whip of Erebus for something cheap is a better fix. Cards I'd like to add to the wishlist here are Shriekmaw, Woe Strider, Undead Gladiator, Pack Rat, Doom Whisperer, Balagat Recovery, Traverse the Olvenwald, Ultra of Dementia, and Smuggler's Copter. Cards already on the wishlist that get a plus one are Collective Brutality and Commander Dreadhorde, and Jade Light Ranger. For is it really the only realistic archetype for us to choose is Spells Matter, where players are looking to play many non-creature spells, mainly cheap instants and sorceries, and benefit from that in some way. In Magic, red is historically the most aggressive color and blue the most controlling. This combination often leads to tempo or aggro control decks that combine some controlling elements to set up and protect threats that can kill the opponent quickly, or at least leave them vulnerable to a couple of burn spells. Spells meta strategies are often, but not always, somewhere on this aggro control skill, either more tempo or burn based, possibly focusing on wizards or prowess, and sometimes more controlling and reliant on more expensive threats. But spells meta strategies can also focus on storm, combo kills or on more exotic synergies like copying spells and taking turns. I don't think for this cube we want to go in that direction though and I prefer some sort of aggro control approach. We don't want too many payoffs for this strategy because the most important thing is to have a critical mass of cheap spells. And it's possible that a deck full of counters, card draw and burn spells is sometimes happy enough with just any blue or red finisher from one of the other collections. So let's only select 9 payoffs, but let's make them count. For the multicolor payoffs I like Crackling Drake and Sprite Dragon. 
These are both powerful, can kill the opponent quickly if left unchecked, and are clear signposts. Because of their mana cost and card text, it's very unlikely that anyone but the spell's meta deck will take these. And given that we won't have many payoffs to start with, I think that's a good thing here. Even though when we decided between Jared and Porukonos for Golgari, we made the opposite case. The Spells Matters deck simply doesn't really have to worry about being parasitic, because all of its enablers are instants and sorceries that will likely be desirable by any players at the table. Here are some other multicolor payoffs that were in contention. For hybrid there aren't many options, but luckily Lutri is perfect, especially because the companion condition is so easy to achieve in cube. Only joking, Lutri is an abomination and Sahili on the other hand is excellent. For blue, these are the payoffs I like. I want at least one of the three fast creatures, and the two other blue payoffs can be a bit more on the controlling side, while still being able to close out a game quickly if unanswered. I think these three make for a good mix. This is the short list of red payoffs I made. I want these to be a bit more on the aggressive side, and Young Pyromancer and Magmatic Channeler are both just great two drops, even if you don't go too hard on the spells theme. Reveler is the most linear choice here for the players that go all in. Since the Izzet strategy is Spells Matter, the enablers are simply any instants and sorceries, but let's make sure that the ones that we choose for the collection reflect what our payoffs want us to be doing. Had we chosen payoffs like Double Vision and Mirari Conjecture, then we would have selected more high impact spells that are great to copy or rebuy. Had we gone for combos as our win condition, we would have focused more on card selection. But our payoffs are more at home in an aggro control strategy, so we will look more at direct damage spells and spells that give us a tempo advantage, like cheap counters and bounce spells. For multicolor, it's hard to pass up on Electrolyze, because a burn spell that replaces itself is exactly the kind of card that makes this strategy hum. Experimental Overload is less powerful, but a clear signpost enabler that also doubles as a payoff. Instead of a true hybrid card, I selected Fire Ice, because it's just a flexible cube card that I would have been sad not to include. For blue, we have some cheap cantrips that are so important to get these decks going, some tempo-friendly counter spells, a card neutral bounce spell, and Kermister's Insight is there for the more controlling decks to keep drawing cards, and by itself it can trigger payoffs like Young Pyromancer twice. Let's add some additional cantrips and mana leak to the wishlist. For red, we have some burn spells that can also damage players, cards that let players loot through their deck for some extra velocity, and Finale and the flashback cards also enable multiple Young Pyromancer or Tolerant triggers out of a single card. Let's add Lightning Bolt and some other burn spells to the wishlist, because our final cube will want a few more of those. The entire collection then looks like this. More than previous collections, this looks very much like a finished deck. If this were an actual deck, you might want some more spells and fewer creatures, but as the core of the Issa strategy, this looks to me pretty well balanced. We only need to make sure to add enough instants and sorceries to the other collections or the generic piles for red and blue, and that is not a big ask. On the day of recording, the MTG Goldfish deck pricer tool tells us this collection costs a bit over $23, so that is completely within budget. We could easily go under $20 by replacing Remand and Thing in the Ice, but it doesn't look like we need to, so let's not. And that gets us halfway there. We have now made collections for 5 out of our 10 guilds, and we have 41 cards on our wishlist that should help in deciding on the final 50 monocolored cards, lands and colorless cards. At this moment I am not sure yet if I will make one video with the remaining 5 guilds, or if I will break this up into two separate episodes. It takes a while to make these videos, so I hope you have some patience for the rest of this series. If you subscribe to this channel, you get notified when they come out. Feel free to leave a comment if you have uh, any questions or remarks, and thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you next time.